Welcome back, I'm Shane, this is Relative Time, and today we're going to be checking out this Dirty Dozen inspired piece right here. Although, we're actually going to be focusing more on the dial it contains than the watch itself. This watch is actually a mod project from Fernando Alvarez, who goes by DIY Watch and Straps on Instagram. Fernando is also one of the five members of Cinco Mentes Horology, which is a brand that was started by five watch modding friends from Instagram. And they created it with the goal of just making very interesting and high quality components for watch modders. Now, some of this may seem a little bit familiar, and that's because last year I took a look at their very first product, which was the fully loomed Firefly dial. And this year they are back with the Firefly version 2. Which to be honest sounds a little bit confusing. When Fernando asked me if I wanted to check out the version 2, I was expecting another fully loomed dial. And this is something completely different. Just like version 1, this is still a field watch, but here it's one that does its best to honor the classic Dirty Dozen watches of World War II. But let's first jump in and take a look at the watch itself, as I think Fernando did a fantastic job putting this thing together. I'm not sure where the handset came from, but I do believe the case is originally a San Martin. And I think this does go to show you that one of the easiest ways to get into modding is just to buy an inexpensive watch and swap out the dial and hands. It's a great learning experience, and it's a lot easier than buying all the different components individually. The case itself is a bit smaller. I think this one is actually 36 millimeters, and it has this really great brushed finish throughout. I believe this is actually a unimatic homage, and it definitely has those sharp angular lugs as well as this really tall domed crystal with AR. Overall, I think it's a great platform to add this dial to. It still has that tool watch vibe, but it gives it a very unique look. The only real issue I've had with this watch is that there is quite a bit of reflection here, and that is something you're going to see as we get to the macro shots. But I think that's more due to the domed crystal than the dial itself, as the dial has more of a flat texture, and that kind of gives the whole thing a bit of a chalkboard-like appearance. The layout here is very dirty dozen, where you have white Arabics for indicators, and those are then surrounded by detailed train track chapter ring. The only thing that's really missing here is a sub-second hand at the bottom half of the dial, but they were designing this to be used with the Seiko NH series of movements, as they're the most common ones around, so I think that is understandable. And they also do list that this is compatible with some Vostok cases as well. Then, just to make it a little bit more their own, they added their brand as well as a cool double F logo at the top. Then, at the bottom of the dial, they also added some flavor text. Which, in my opinion, isn't really necessary, but I guess they did have to fill some of that void left without the sub second hand. Now, overall, it's very well done. But when you look at the design as a whole, and especially the font used for the Arabics, I think it becomes just a bit too obvious that they were going for an homage of the time or heritage field. And especially with that brand and logo placement, that just might be a bit too on the nose there. Personally, I would have moved the font and the brand to the bottom half of the dial and just left the upper half empty, which would have given it a little bit of a different look as well as a cleaner feel. But being an homage isn't necessarily a bad thing. Now, while this is a little less original than, say, the version 1 dial, I think for those that want to make their own Dirty Dozen style watch, it's still a great option. And just like Fernando did here, you could always give it a little bit of a different style case just to make it a little bit more of your own. One area that Cinco Mentes Horology really went above and beyond here is with the loom. At least in terms of the design, as they use a combination of BGW9 and C3 Super Luminova. And I really love that they actually went the distance to loom up the logo here. Now initially it looks fantastic, but I still want to do a bit of a comparison test. Now remember, we are focusing on the dial here, and overall I think the dial does okay. It lasts longer than the dial markers on both the Vostok and the Hami, but it does fade out quite a bit earlier than the Seiko Diver, which is actually okay and maybe a bit expected, as this is a field watch and not a diver. And in that regard, I think it's pretty good for what it is, and Cinco Mentis gets bonus points for just the cool two-tone look. Pair this with a good set of hands, and I think you are good to go. So for those that are interested in the dial, the price is $41.50 plus shipping, and you can contact Cinco Mentis either through their Instagram page or through their Etsy page. As far as I know, they don't quite have their own website yet, but that is something I do recommend they work on. 
Although, I guess it is important to remember that this is made up of five members of the watch modding community, and they're really doing it just to do it and not necessarily make a huge profit. So they're just working with what they have. And if you do go to their Instagram page, you can also see a lot of great examples of what people are doing with this style. And it's always pretty cool to see how creative some people can get. But what do you guys think of the version 2 Firefly dial? And if you had one, what kind of watch would you build it into? Let me know down below. Personally, I'd be kind of curious to see this dial in sort of a mini turtle spork like setup. But let me know what you do down below. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, you all know what to do. I'm Shane, this is Relative Time. See you next time.